Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a collection update for you. Finally, a lot of people have asked, but I've been holding off, waiting for some things to come in, and uh, well, it's about time. So um, today I want to show you what I have in my permanent collection, so to speak, what what I've got around at the moment, and what's been bringing me a lot of joy lately. So um, first off, uh, a couple, a quick note. Um, there were a number of knives that I have around, but that aren't a part of the permanent collection, so to speak. These are knives like the 452 from ZT, or the the, the, the Ontario Rat Number no. One, or the the, the Del Delica and the the, the FRN, right? Yeah, and the FRN. These are knives that I use on a regular basis for comparison. That I I mentioned a lot and that I want to have around for recommendation that I keep around for the channel, but are not necessarily knives that I'm going to grab out of the drawer and carry on a day when I've got an option to. Not because they're bad knives, but just because I have other things that bring me a little bit more joy. Um, and so you're not going to be seeing those guys. Instead, these are the knives that I choose from on a regular basis when it's time for me to do some carrying. So I'll kind of introduce everybody on the table here. This right here is the Spyderco Dragonfly. I've talked about this many times, but this is one of the very best travel knives out there. Specifically, because it's going to be legal in a lot of places because of the relatively short blade length. The ZDP steel is not going to dull even during the course of a longer trip, and it's one of those knives that's very lightweight, and it's also very unintimidating. Um, this is a knife that's really, really great and uh, that, that I love and that I will always be keeping around just for travel reasons. Bow's Blade Smoke. This is a great piece, absolutely 100%. It's a front flipper. Actually, it's the only front flipper. I'm sorry, no, the Alamic Busca is also a front flipper of sorts, um, but it's it's one of few front flippers in my collection, and it's just, it's a great piece. It has 35 VN. It's a, a great longer knife. It's so damned easy to carry because it's vertical, and it's got a soft spot in my heart because this is one of the first knives that I stealth reviewed to ever come to production. So, there's a joy there. This little guy is a GEC Wall Street 99 that's been modified by a guy named, uh, used to go by Toad Sticker on, uh, on YouTube, actually. And he went through and he actually did the modification to add in this easy open notch. This is sort of, if I have a a super dressy kind of thing that I drop in a slip in my pocket. This is what I would carry for that, but it's still a backlock. It's still a beautiful, beautiful knife. Spyderco Rhodey is probably my one of the better travel knives as well, because not only is it super legal, because it's not even a locking knife, but it's super tiny. It's uh, it's uh, it doesn't even hang out on the pocket. You can just drop this into the pocket with your keys, and you know what? It works great. This is a great little knife, and uh, one that I really, really find compelling. Um, this is a Spyderco Delica, and actually I've got a couple of Delicas, but this is an interesting one in that this was given to me by my buddy Ian. He's got a channel on YouTube, actually, Gearology. Uh, check him out. He's in my uh, favorite EDC channels uh, playlist there. But this is a, a scale that actually requires you to modify the liners, but gives the Spyderco Delica a finger choil. This is really, really cool. Um, because not only are the scales nice, and not only is a ZDP Delica, but you get a finger choil on a Delica, which makes this a very different experience. And I desperately hope that the Delica 5, whenever that becomes a time, has something like this so that you do truly get the choil that it almost has in its stock configuration. Here, I'll show you what a stock Delica looks like. It's got that little thing that pokes down there at the end. That's a slightly different affair, but you know what? It makes it a much, much more compelling knife when you do this. So there you go. And speaking of Delicas, there's this guy. This is the Packer Wood Delica with a Hap 40 steel. Um, this is probably my favorite Delica to carry on a regular basis just because I love the wood, and it's it's just a beautiful knife. One other Delica that's in my collection, gift from my buddy Sid, actually, is this little guy. This is a uh, the Damascus Delica from Spyderco. It's an older version. I don't carry it very often because it doesn't have a pocket clip, but it is absolutely gorgeous with the jigged bone here and everything. It's just, it's a gorgeous piece, and so it's definitely stuck around this odd end because it was a gift from a good friend. So that's always nice. Um, Next thing here, we've got this Chris Reeve tie lock. I've said so many times why I love this knife. I'm so sad that they've discontinued it, but you know what? It's stuck around, and I every so often I think to myself, oh, maybe, I, I don't know, Maybe I should sell this guy. But the thing is, this is as nice of a gentleman's knife uh, out there, at least in my mind. And uh, frankly, it's just, it's it's too beautiful. I know if I sold it, I'd buy it back. So might as well skip that. This one snuck into my collection by surprise. This is a Kershaw Knives dividend, but this is the S35 version. It's actually produced for House of Blades. Um, and normally it has a red backspacer, but I sanded that down because I'm not a big fan of the red there. But, um... 
This is actually a surprisingly compelling piece because it's S35 VN steel. It's got very thin stock. It comes to a very thin edge. This is a really great functional cutting tool. Um, and although the assist is there, it's not super aggro. And so it's a one-hand openable, closable knife. It's absolutely a beautiful thing. And I found it slipping into my pocket a little more often than I expected it to. In a lot of cases, covering with a Delica would have taken over in the past. Um, the Spydeco Sleash Bowie, a knife so nice I bought it twice. Um, this is just absolutely an incredible freaking piece and uh you know my my love for this knife is well documented <sighs> the z hunter as always, I just can't quit you, Z Hunter. Um, this guy is actually one of the newest additions to my collection. This is the uh, Millet Knives version 2 Torrid. And this is a, a very special one that's been made with a Damasteel overlay, as well as a Damasteel blade, coupled with this beautiful anodization. I have a full video about this guy that I'm probably going to air, well, frankly, about 20 minutes after I finish making this video. Uh, uh, but this is absolutely just a beautiful knife, and it takes what I loved about my original uh, Torrent, which was the beautiful damascus steel blade and the nice design, and it just uh, it puts it up a huge notch and brings it into the fancier taste where my collection appears to have been going lately. This guy, um, I might surprise a number of you, this is a Spydeco Nirvana. Um, but the thing is, this isn't just any Spydeco Nirvana. Some time back, a long time back, I reviewed a Spydeco Nirvana, and then uh, my buddy Jim actually sent me this guy to uh, check out, this exact knife, um, where he had had it sent to uh, Josh over at Razor Edge Knives um, and reground entirely. And so this is probably the best cutting knife out of any of these on the table because it has been ground with this incredibly thin edge that's just absolutely astoundingly good for doing work. I love this knife in a lot, a lot of ways, and I was able to pick this up for just an incredible, incredible, incredible price off of a buddy of mine. Uh, and so, I and this exact knife, uh, through a circuitous route through a bunch of friends, it's absolutely wonderful, and I'm thrilled to have it back because it is such a damn good cutting tool, and a blade that I actually like, coupled with this handle, absolutely beautiful. The Graham Razel has stuck around, absolutely 100%. Um, very, very nice piece. Absolutely a big fan of it still. Um, does it get as much pocket time as the rest? No, not necessarily. But you know what? I still like it. And on a day where I'm going to be doing, you know, uh, home improvement-y stuff where that's useful, that's probably still a good choice. This guy, probably the knife I've carried most in terms of time over my life, is this, my little Leatherman squirt here. You can see I orange peeled the handles here. It's it's a silly little knife, but by God, it brings me some joy. Speaking of silly little knives, um, this guy right here, this is the Alamic Busker. This is another one of just a favorite favorite because it's got this beautiful um uh timascus inlay here it's just beautifully sized it fits great in the pocket this is a knife that i still love carrying on a regular basis uh as regular as any one of my you know knives from my own collection can be with as many as i have to carry but this one always brings me a bit of joy in the pocket and frankly it, it's just so damn much fun because you can flick it in about 50 different ways even with a bandaged up thumb it's a uh, steel wheel uh, resident actually got me, the side of the thumb disc. Uh, yeah, you'll be hearing about that later. Anyways, um, so that's nice. Um, this right here is the Grimm's Morask. This is a beautiful knife. This is the knife that beat out the Norseman in my collection and uh, is absolutely just a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, with a beautifully smooth action, a nice design, false shutty. It, this is such a great piece. And then with the details that the Grimsmos are known for. And so that's absolutely stuck around. Um, this is a Spydeco Chaparral and FRN. This was a surprise addition to the collection as well. I didn't think that th this knife didn't make sense to me. Like, why would I have this when the Dragonfly is also a thing? But as I said in my review, the competition for the, 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 the FRN Chaparral is not actually the Dragonfly, but it's the Delica. And this is, in my estimation, for many, many many people a Delica killer. And so I picked one of these guys up for the channel, both for review, but it's actually been finding its way into my pocket on a regular basis, because XHP is a very nice steel. This design is super thin and easy to carry. I mean, seriously, size-wise, it's about the same size as the Alamic Busca, so it's a very, very easy carry on a regular basis, and it's just, it's an incredible piece. Of course, there is the Egyptian Swish. This guy, still, I love looking at. I, I, I open up my, and I just pull it out, and I look at it. it. It's gorgeous. I do carry it as well, because, you know what, it's still a great knife. And that's the beautiful thing here, is it's functionally just as nice as anything else on the table. And uh, mechanically, it's really excellent, too. But it's also got this incredible engraving that still brings me joy every time I use it. Um, and so those are the knives that have been a part of my permanent collection. But there's a, there's a hole here. And, uh, well, that hole 
is left by the Grimsmo Norseman. Um, as many of you may have remembered, I, I had a video where I talked about the fact that I did end up selling my Grimsmo Knives Norseman. Um, and the reason that happened was two things. A, it was being, uh, it wasn't being carried as much as the Rask. And also because I got an offer that I just couldn't refuse. A, a very, very generous friend that made me an offer for it that it was just like, okay, I like the Norseman a lot, but okay, I like that amount of money even more. And so I, I made the sale. And that, that, that's fine. And I feel good about that because, well, it's making a honeymoon possible, or at least a substantial portion of it. So that's really, really good. Yet at the same time, recently I had another opportunity. Uh, a buddy of mine, actually, uh, my buddy Sid, um, made me uh, an offer. He had picked up, he's a bit of a, a Grimsmo enthusiast, to put it nicely. Uh, he's got a whole bunch of freaking Grimsmos. And he picked one up, and he made me an offer to sell me one at a price that is absolutely just a gift. Uh, like a, that's not the real price, come on. Oh, okay, and so he, he actually... He sent me this knife at an incredible price, and I have a Norseman again. That's right. This little guy, this is my uh, my new Grimsmo Norseman. This is number 821, and uh, in some ways, what's entertaining about it, um, in addition to having the honeycomb pattern, which I really think is kind of a prototypical Norseman thing, um, it has uh, it is actually exactly the inverse of my old Norseman. My old Norseman had blue handles and bronze hardware on the inside here. This has bronze handles and blue hardware. So it's sort of the opposite. It's also a new Norseman. Um, 821 is relatively recent. And so it has all the innovations that the other one didn't. Um, so, for instance, it's got these little holes on the uh, screws indicating that these are Grimsmo made fasteners. Um, it has on the inside here, and I'll do a full video on this guy uh, later on, but it's got the full on Made in Canada on the inside there. It's still got the Grimsmo knives thing, and it's got the flush pivot uh, on the back side here. And th this is a brand new Norseman, and frankly, the action is even better than my prior one, which is actually really impressive. I didn't think the Norseman action could get better, but in the recent one, where they've been using the Mori Mill, um, this is even better. And so um, a, a, a great uh, a great disturbance in the force, so to speak, has been righted uh, as I, again, thanks to the incredible generosity of my buddy Sid, uh, I have an Norseman again. And so this, then, is my complete knife collection at the moment. Some things may end up getting sold. Um, that, that's just a simple fact of life. I'm to the point where I have a bunch of knives, and I have a little container that needs to hold them all, and they don't currently all fit. And so that makes me, uh, that, that, that makes things a little bit awkward for me. But at the same time, uh, oh man, this is a really great collection, and I'm a really lucky man to be able to pick up these kinds of things, whether it's through the generosity of friends, whether it's through the generosity of my Patreon patrons, and whether it's just, you know, I happen to be in the right place at the right time, or I just go in deep and pay the damn price. Um, this is absolutely bringing me a lot of joy. And so uh, there you go. That is the state of the Nick Shabazz knife collection in uh, 2018 as of March 17th. Um, I hope that this has been interesting to you. Um, thank you so much to everybody who's made it possible for me to have this just beautiful cavalcade of gems here. And uh, have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye, everybody.